Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, I mean over the top beautiful day here in the Orwellian police state lockdown here in Garfield, Texas on this gorgeous Sunday evening. <clears throat> that would be April 19th, <coughs> 2020. And uh, so I am sitting on the front porch so I don't have to look at that dying cottonwood tree but anyway guys it, it has been an interesting day here i have been holding my open house here in the uh orwellian police state lockdown five hours ago i had no offers on this house that was five hours ago now i do not have one offer i do not have two offers i have three offers on this house in the last five hours it appears to be i see more and more signs that uh the people are starting to understand that we need to get back to our lives so uh anyway i just told everybody everybody here we're all going to sleep on it i say give me your offer tomorrow uh but i really do think guys do wish me luck that I am going to sell this place. Good Lord, which probably means I will be up to New York around the 1st of June, ready to build my little cabin for the uh, end times. So, uh, you, you know, if you throw enough shit against the wall with three verbal offers, which are worth the paper they're printed on, some of this, one of these is going to stick. And I am going to get out of here. Uh, but anyway, since it is Sunday, uh, it is time for my doomsday sermon here on that one channel. And this will also serve as my collapse chronicle for, uh, for Monday, uh, April 20th, uh, 2020. So anyway... Uh, we're going to go over here to Ugo Barty, to my fellow Collapsitarian Ugo Barty's excellent website called Cassandra's Legacy. And this is a long, involved piece. I'm not going to have time to get to all of it. Uh, <clears throat> but I will put the link on here and you can fill in the missing gaps. So this is from, a, this is a guest, instead this is not written by, by Ugo. He invited a, a guest onto his website, Jacopo or Jacopo Simonetta. Jacopo Simonetta. I have no idea uh, who uh, Jacopo Simonetta is, but I don't even know if Jacopo probably ending in O, probably a man. But anyway, so uh, this is titled, Fate is Coming Back. What do we do when no choice is good? And this, uh, you know, is the ultimate question that with each passing day, this latest episode on the planet, just being the latest example, of the what I call the frying pan versus the fire is basically what they're talking about here is all of these frying pan versus the uh, fire choice that no matter what choice we make while we're having all of these ridiculous debates about how to solve these unsolvable predicaments where there is no solution. It makes no difference what choice we make, whether it be how we f approach our reaction to the C word, uh, this, uh, we're screwed and our fellow earthlings are screwed, you know, geoengineering or not to geoengineer, it makes no difference. The planet is screwed. I mean, more and more, every time we turn around, there is another frying pan versus the cho fire choice where any choice we make is the wrong choice. 
There are no right choices to make. There is no way to make a right choice. The, the, the most we can hope for is hope that we're choosing the lesser of two or more likely ten evils. So that is essentially what this, uh, what do we do when no choice is good, is about how do you uh, spend the rest of your life once you understand how screwed we are. Anyway, uh, now I, there's a lot of these uh, um, references to all of this mythology, to the, like this Greek and Roman mythology and all of this stuff. I'm going to skip over it. Obviously, the section on how we approach the C word. This is not a C word chronicle. You can fill into that about how there is no way that we're going. It, it, it makes no difference which side you take on this C word. Any choice we make we, uh, is, is the wrong choice. There is no right choice. So this whole pointless debate uh, it, it's ridiculous. I noticed I lost more subscribers yesterday on Collapse Chronicles than in any one day in history. Uh, anyway, but we're not going to talk about it. Anyway, let's get over to our sermon by Jacopo Simonetta. It is called triage. It happens in the emergent de emergency departments when the influx of ill or injured patients exceeds the capacity of the hospital, so doctors must decide whom to save first and whom to save later if they are still alive. I have always thought this is the worst thing that a doctor may be forced to do, but it happens, and doctors, like other emergency professionals, are, at least in part, prepared to face these situations. We normal people are not, but this does not mean that we can abstain from making choices when even failing to make a choice will have consequences. You know, that's the other thing. Uh, you, you just try to pretend like it doesn't exist. Just ignore it uh, like 99% of the planet and we're, we're screwed. There's no way out, people. There's no way out. Uh, so even when failing to make a choice will have consequences. In fact, the extraordinary bubble of peace and well-being that has cocooned the Western world for 70 years is vanishing, making us completely unprepared to face the very idea of tragedy. Exactly, thank you, nobody. Uh, like, like when a real tragedy gets here. I am not referring to the crises of collective hysteria that overwhelm us at every little difficulty, but to our inability to sustain the weight of the responsibility of choices that whatever we decide to do will provoke great damage and suffering. Now, I don't know whether this person is, uh, whose name I've already forgotten, uh, is talking about, are they talking about just humans or are they talking about our fellow earthlings? I think they could certainly be talking uh, both about humans and our fellow earthlings. And just this latest, what does he call it? This latest collective hysteria that overwhelm us at every little difficulty. I am talking about, e even in this case, uh, whatever choice we make, of how to handle this or any other one of these things will provoke great damage and suffering to you, to the people you love, to humanity, to all of our fellow earthlings, and to this planet.
that's what I am choosing to read into this. Outside of our collapsing bubble, this kind of situation is instead frequent and has been masterfully illustrated in many masterpieces of ancient philosophy and literature. <clears throat> These are the dynamics of fate. Men are not simply dragged by a scornful destiny. They are instead called upon to make choices whose consequences will be inevitable, meaning inevitably bad, so that not even Zeus could change them. And so then, uh, what is this person's name? Uh, Jacopo. What Jacopo does uh, is, is go through, visit some of these uh, ancient tragedies uh, where cases in which every possible option of the characters in the tragedy, which all of us, we are all characters in a tragedy. It, 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 it is funny as this tragic comedy may seem. This is, a, this is a tragedy, people. And I'm not talking this latest little outbreak of collective hysteria. I'm talking about what's going on on this planet is a tragedy. And so he, uh, the, the, so he looks at cases in which every possible option will have disastrous consequences and nevertheless the hero, in this case, humanity must choose. So how do we do this? How do we live with the knowledge, the few of us coming into the knowledge, there is no prediction that every one of these debates is completely pointless. Uh, you know, where you don't like to hear uh, something that, that, that interferes with your little worldview. So we're just going to unsubscribe to this channel. He's telling me, he's telling me something I don't want to hear. Nanny, nanny, boo, boo. Nanny, nanny, boo, boo. I don't hear you. I don't hear you. So you can take that choice. This is the choice that 99% of people make. They, they make their choices and they stick with it regardless of all of the evidence to the contrary that their choices are wrong. Although, of course, if they, if they don't spend all of their time just in ad hominem attacks on the person making the other points, they, and they actually point out why that person's choices are wrong. Anyway, I'm getting carried away from myself. All right, uh, where are we? Okay, anyway, we're going to move ahead through all of these uh, historical uh, literary examples. Okay, let's get back to the modern world. Let's move back up to 2020. All right. We have pretended we're back in modern, modern humans. We have pretended and continue to pretend that we, meaning humans, are immune to these kinds of situations. But the truth is knocking at our door harder and harder and visible cracks, visible cracks, yes. Uh, have opened in the physical and psycho, psychical walls we have built against us. Okay, let's look at some examples. Let us make an easy example, uh, an easy example of the kind of tragic choices that we are in any case forced to take. Okay, let's, let's just throw a dart. Taxing air flights so to drastically reduce their number would surely have positive effects on the environment and climate, but would immediately force tens of thousands of people out of their jobs, most of whom would not easily find another one. And excuse me for doing this. Okay, 
the ecotourism trade in, in sub-Saharan Africa has collapsed. The airlines have collapsed. Nobody is flying into Africa anymore. So all of these people who depended uh, on their fellow earthlings to provide the money from tourism to feed their families now have no choice but to eat the very animals that they were protecting because of uh, the, the, these air, airline flights that we're all cheering on, uh, making our skies so much bluer. The, the trade-off is the megafaunal extinction that is already ramping up in Africa. Okay, there you go. So this is a perfect example. Uh, all right, so what should we do? There is no answer. This is just one little detail of the, f get out of here! There is no uh, honeybee apocalypse in Garfield, Texas. Okay, get the, get out of here, get out of here. Get that bug, you're gonna get that bug or not. All right, so what should we do? This is just a little detail of the fundamental topic that humanity will have to face from now on, actual degrowth, which is appearing to be a lot more problematic than the theoretical one. Can you say what we're seeing now? We are seeing the effects of actual degrowth over the past few weeks. We are seeing a few positive effects and a lot of negative effects, uh, which is appearing to be a lot more problematic than the theoretical one. In fact, we could discuss the deep, get that bug like, get, get that bug, get that, get the bug. Now, if you bite him, you're gonna get stung in your mouth. All right. <clears throat> We could discuss the details for a long time, but nobody in good faith can deny that humanity as a whole has largely passed our planet's limits to sustainability. Just to mention a few numbers. Today, the technosphere, also known as the anthroposphere, that is humanity with all its infrastructure and symbionts amounts to about 40,000 million tons. 40,000 million tons. And now I am hearing uh, my computer is telling me that I no longer can see my article. And this honeybee is driving me and the little dog. Craig, go get that. Go get that bee. Get the bug. Would you get that bug like that? Get the bug. Uh, where is the damn insect apocalypse when you need one? Get out of here! Anyway, uh, good Lord, why can't we have a damn insect apocalypse when I need one? All right. Uh, okay. Just a minute. All right. So this is 40,000 million tons coming out to 4,500 tons, you know, of planet-eating crap per person. Although, of course, uh, you know, on this side of the planet, that's in about 150 to 1. You better get out of here, you little shit! Uh, anyway, uh... Little bee, I am telling you, I, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna follow you home. I am gonna collapse your entire hive. I'm gonna squash this honeybee. Okay, you guys. All right, I just killed one of my fellow Earthlings with my margarita. My uh, doomsday margarita has killed a honeybee. Come on, with the, with the hate mail. Yes. All right, so I can finally now get back to my drink as we talk about doomsday. All right, we and our domestic animals, can you say the little dog, are about 98% of the world's fauna and about 40% of the Earth's surface is completely artificialized. 
urban, suburban, agricultural, etc. 37% is made up of natural habitats, but heavily modified for anthropic uses, such as pastures and almost all forest. Only 23% can of the planet can still be classed as is on the on land, I think they're talking about, as wild. A few remote forests, but almost only deserts, mountaintops, and arctic regions. And then they link us over to some, uh, where they got all these figures from. Things are even worse at sea. We now estimate that only 13% of the ocean is still basically intact. But these are all very optimistic assessments as factors like global warming and the related acidification of the seas, global diffusion of polluting agents of all kinds, the growing number of barriers to movements by wild species, and the contemporary spread of alien ones, industrial fishing and hunting of rare species, the dying off of insects being crushed by margaritas, uh, the dying off of insects and amphibians, the worldwide alteration of nearly all biogeochemical cycles tell us that the Earth is by now a planet inhabited by one single species, Homo sapiens industrialis, alias Homo colossus, uh, Homo colossus, compliments of William Catton, uh, with its symbionts, commensal species, and parasites. Everything else, every one of our fellow earthlings outside of us and our domestic animals survives in extremely precarious conditions in the interstices and cracks of the technosphere, but it is only these survivors that still ensure the existence of conditions favorable to biological life on Earth. This means not only that substantial degrowth is the only sensible thing to do, but also that it is an inevitable fact. There is no way we can prevent it, and postponing it will only mean paying a much bigger price a little later. However, the vast majority of people rejects this view, and in the last month, I am beginning to reject this view. Uh, again, this article was written, well, you know, when all of the negative ecological effects of the, the economic collapse are, are being felt. So I'm beginning to, to be for different reasons than 99.9% .9 of the people. Anyway, people like me are not who he's talking about here. However, the vast majority of people rejects this view, preferring to imagine strategies, even very ingenious ones, to have it both ways. They have very good reasons to do so, because accepting overshoot would mean accepting the price of the environmental debt that we have piled up. Of course, we will pay it anyway, but we cannot blame those who prefer looking the other way. In fact, I have the impression that even among the degrowthers, there are few that have actually deeply reflected on how much it will be necessary to degrow to stabilize the climate and stop mass extinction. What we're seeing in Africa is how degrowth is exacerbating mass extinction. The Bill Gatey model. Uh, I really would like to get this person on the show, but I'm afraid they don't speak English and, and, and get their ideas uh, what they think about what is, what is, but anyway, I said we're not going to talk about the C word. 
obviously it is impossible to make a precise estimate, but to have a rough idea, we will make a very easy calculation using energy consumption as an indicator of general impacts. This is an approximation, but it is close enough to reality. On a global, le on a global level, we estimate that humanity passed our planet's carrying capacity in the early 1970s when worldwide energy consumption was in the order of 70,000 terawatts, where now it is about 165,000 terawatts. So, you know, by uh, two and a half times what it was when we passed our planet's carrying capacity. Let us imagine going back to that 70,000 terawatts of energy of 50 years ago, what would per capita consumption be? Between 1970 and 2020, human population has doubled. I think it's more like tripled. But anyway, according to them, in the last 50 years, human population has doubled. This means that to bring global consumption back down to about 70,000 terawatts, per capita availability would have to be less than one quarter of what it is now. This means a level of consumption similar to what we find today in Moldavia, Albania, Egypt, or Nigeria, to make some examples. Speaking of Italy, this, you know, this is, friend, this was written by an Italian. Speaking about Italy, it would mean us going back to 19th century per capita consumption levels without considering that such poor societies would probably not be able to produce the technologies that consent the life of 8 billion people starting from the sophisticated devices necessary to convert sunlight and wind into electricity, meaning that these renewable energy sources are a joke. With this, I am not saying that in a few years we will be living with candles and horses. I just want to clarify that we do not have to give up just the unnecessary, we have to give up a lot that we see as necessary or an acquired, an acquired right, starting from a life expectancy of over 80 years. This is getting pretty radical. Can we say triage at the hospital, let the 80-year-olds die. Life is for the living. Okay? Th this is what we're up against, guys. This opens a wide range of questions that, whether we like it or not, we will have to face. Because when the blanket gets too short, we have to choose whether to cover our feet or our shoulders. In actual terms, this means choosing who must be sacrificed so that the others have more chance of surviving. And of course, to take it to the next level, humans have to go. For all of our other earthlings to survive, we have to get rid of the humans. But that is not, you choose. What I like about this essay is you can choose what the, the author just leaves enough left unsaid where you can fill in your own blanks. Okay, who would you choose? Who would you choose to sacrifice so that others have more chance of surviving? It depends. First, you got to uh, define the term others. Okay, then they go into the C word. So if you want to see, uh, I'm going to skip over the C word, talking about all of the impossible choices. 
that there is no way out of this latest collective hysteria. There's no way out of it without a whole lot of people dying and a whole lot of, of economic suffering. Uh, whoever is right, uh, the best we're going to do is, is, is who is least wrong is the very best, and we got to face up to this, that everybody is wrong. Anybody who thinks there's a right way out of this is wrong. We're all wrong. There is no right way out of it. A lot of people are going to die. A lot of people are going to suffer. We need to start looking at which way uh, our fellow earthlings are going to be affected. And again, I've done that research and come to the conclusion e either way we approach this, not only is it hopeless for humans, it's ho uh, is it hopeless for the economy, it's hopeless for our fellow earthlings. Anyway, so uh, then they look at th these, uh, these refugee a crisis that you know the same no matter how we approach the the exploding refugee crisis as more and more of these refugees all over the planet it makes no difference what we do do we accept them in do we kick them out no matter what we do there's going to be losers and losers uh, just one more frying pan or the fire, the refugee crisis. Uh, okay, so we're going to move through that. Uh, all right, we're just going to get down to the bottom. You can go on the link and fill this. I need to wrap this up. We can also think of other solutions, you know, to all of these problems. We can sit up here and think of solutions till the cows come home, but anything realistically feasible will mean tragic consequences for someone. There are many other fields where we see similar dilemmas. How do we face these situations? Because in the end, every one of us will have to find a compromise between our mental model of the world and the physical reality that is coming back into our lives peaceful up to now. I would say we basically have two options. The first is to deny one or more pieces of the puzzle so as to simplify it and restore the satisfying dynamics of good versus evil. At this point, we must choose our side, yes, and then assume things do not work because of that other side. Whatever happens, whatever happens, it's the other side's fault. Oh yeah. The second option is to accept that in many key matters of the present and the near future, we have several possible choices, but none of them will not cause major damage and suffering from which we will all share responsibility even if we choose not to choose because there will still be painful consequences anyway, just like it was for Orestes and Antigone. Amen, whoever you are. One more time, who was this person? Uh, Jacopo Simonetta. Uh, and uh, three cheers for Ugo Bardi for uh, bringing this excellent essay. And uh, if you have not checked out Ugo Bardi's uh, website, Cassandra's Legacy, and you will find uh, my interviews. I have a full hour-long interview with Ugo 
uh, on Collapse Chronicles and somewhere else here in the Doomosphere. And I have a Corona Panic Chronicle where I must say that my, that Ugo Barty, for what it's worth, Agreed. I agreed with Ugo Bardi's uh, take on the uh, Corona Panic more than anybody else. So the two dozen people I interviewed, it was Ugo Bardi uh, was the number one most spot on according to my worldview, which has changed quite a bit uh, here in the past few weeks. But anyway, I got to wrap up this uh, today's uh, Doomsday Sermon and tomorrow's uh, Chronicle of the Collapse and start studying for my interview tomorrow with this fellow, uh, John Hewson, who is going to talk about global risks to humanity. So I will be talking to John about uh, the global risks to humanity. So I need to go do my homework. Get out there and enjoy your Orwellian police state lockdown and do wish me luck on selling this house and see if it changes my opinion one bit about the best way to respond to something that has no good way to respond. Bye, guys.